Warning, warning, new NES controllers, inbound. All right, everybody, in case you missed it, Retrobit announced pre-orders on a new NES controller that they are releasing dubbed the Origin 8. And as you can see right here, I have had access to this controller to test out, and I am super excited that I get to finally share it with all of you that these are now live and ready to be ordered. And, oh, I'm very excited. These are actually pretty cool, dedicated NES controllers. They work on NES. PC, Switch, number of other USB devices with the included receivers. So there is an NES receiver, USB receiver, like most Retrobit 2.4 gigahertz controllers. But rather than just talk about this, let's go ahead and take a closer look with the nicer camera. All right, so here is a closer look at the Retrobit Origin 8. This is a near final production sample. I've had this one for a couple of months now, gotten to test it out on a great many NES games and have absolutely been enjoying the heck out of it. But as you can see, the color scheme is reminiscent of original NES controllers. It's got this uh, off-whitish base color, which is really nice. The black faceplate, and then red and black D-pad just to represent NES color schemes. Now, there are two additional colors coming out. There is a Game Boy-inspired one, and then a red one based off of Retrobit's logo colors. So, very cool color options with the possibility of more to come. We'll have to wait and see if they announce any more. But as you can see, it takes this little notch from the Legacy 16 and adds it to this one to kind of have that origin look. Two face buttons, D-pad, start select, so everything you'd expect from an NES controller. We also have a home and screenshot button, as well as RL and then ZRZL, making this perfect for Switch, NES, and Game Boy games as well. Now, one of my favorite features is the inclusion of the turbo switches here. So it's very reminiscent of TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine controllers. So you do get turbo functionality just by activating the switches. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, really helpful for my poor thumb in games like Mega Man these days. So I like having the functionality, even if it uh, might not be preferred for some. Now, just talk about overall feel of this controller. It's... A square brick, kind of like the NES controller. It's a little more rounded, so not as sharp on your hands while you're holding it. D-pad has a good feel to it. It's not overly mushy, it's not too stiff, and it rolls really well. So this one should be pretty nice for a lot of you out there hoping for a decent D-pad. Start select, also really good. And then face buttons. They activate really quickly, and they have a good feel. So, big fan of that. And then the shoulder buttons, I've really enjoyed using these in the Mega Man Zero games, so they work really well, very clicky. And then of course ZRZL also worked to bring up the menus in the Virtual Console, so the functionality is here. And then of course everything is charged through USB-C, so modern standards, gotta love it. Now as far as latency numbers go, it is using Retrobit's V2 uh, uh, revision for their internals, so Latency for both the NES and USB receivers should be around 8 to 10 milliseconds. It's going to be really consistent under a frame of lag. Courses can be affected by other factors such as the condition of your consoles, power supplies, and then any other RF devices in the area that might be interfering. But the chances are good that you're going to experience more lag from your display than the controller itself, depending on your setup. So you're not going to really need to worry about lag with this guy. But just a quick look at the receivers. So here is our NES one. It's nice and compact, not too bad. It's uh, smaller than an 8-bit Doe retro receiver for the NES. USB-C port for firmware updates, and then a sync button and LED indicator. So this one, I believe, was actually handmade, so it's going to be a little bit different for the final production, but works really well, and it looks pretty stylized. I like it. And then, of course, the USB receiver is just uh, Retrobit's typical USB receiver for PC and other USB devices, so it's going to have a V2 indicator on the bottom, probably, but other than that, it's pretty much good to go. But now for some more fun things to showcase the uses of this controller. So here we have the Game Boy Advance app on Nintendo Switch Online, and as you can see, it is working really well, uh, skill level of myself aside. But we have shoulder buttons, D-pad, everything is working wonderfully.
Suspend menu also working as intended, so we can rewind. Save state, and then of course leave the game. And then of course it can also be used in NES games without any issue. And again, this is just on Nintendo Switch Online's NES app. And of course with the NES receiver, you can use it on any original NES console and most clones without issue. So I've personally tested it on the Polymega, the NES Front Loader, as well as Top Loader, the Retrobit Super Retro Trio Plus, the Res Plus, and the Retron 5. And outside of the Retron 5, it has been a pleasant result. Poor Retron 5. So there you have it, the Retrobit Origin 8 near final production sample already handling things really well and it's going to be just ready when it comes out in quarter for 2023 here. So again, pre-orders for this one are open now at Castlemania Games. It's going for $24.99. That gets you the Origin 8, the NES receiver, and the USB receiver. So link to that will be in the description below if you want to check it out. And if you use the discount code ARCADES, you can save another 10% on your purchase. But we're going to go ahead and call it here for this preview. The Origin 8 is proving to be a very capable NES and Game Boy controller for anyone interested in having a dedicated controller for such use cases. And I love that I dropped it. So looking forward to seeing how the final sample shapes up because the production sample has been very solid over the last couple of months. I've honestly had very little to criticize about it. Buttons might be a little bit loud when you shake it but it's kind of not really that big of a deal breaker but um yeah so thank you so much as always for watching today's video check out the origin 8 at castlemania games hit that sub button notification bell like dislike button all that good jazz and we will see you all back next video my wonderful internet peeps you